When we're talking about an extra fine formulation, we're referring to the particle size of the inhaled drug. We have extra fine particles and non-extra fine particles. And in the scientific community, there is some debate over the definition, but it's well accepted that the definition of an extra fine particle is one that has a particle size, a mean particle size of less than two microns in diameter, and a non-extra fine particle has a particle size, a mean particle size of more than two microns in diameter. The MMMD certainly correlates with lung deposition. We know from data from 20 to 25 years ago that larger particles, those that are more than three and a half and four microns, tend to deposit more in the central airways. And we undertook a study a few years ago in vivo in patients with asthma to show that this was clearly the case. What was interesting is we showed that particles that were three and a half microns, three microns or less, and particularly those that were one and a half microns gave you better deposition in the peripheral airways as well as equally good deposition in the central airways. So particle size is very important when we're thinking about lung deposition and the important aspect I think to think about is can we use a drug that has a particle size that is able to target the whole airway tree, the large and the small airways and not just the large airways. So when we're talking about benefit in asthma and benefit in COPD, we're asking our patients, do they have better asthma control? Are, is their quality of life improved in asthma and in COPD? So the important uh, question to ask here is, when you compare an extra fine particle, that which has a diameter of less than two microns, and a non-extra fine particle, um, is there a difference on asthma control and on quality of life? The randomized control trials um, that have been performed over the last five years have compared large and small particle sizes. And what they have shown is that the extra fine particle is able to achieve as good an effect as the coarse particles on asthma control. So what message is that telling us? It's telling us we have an option now to consider using a small particle therapy. A small particle therapy that we know targets the large and the small airways and we know that asthma and COPD, certainly asthma is a disease of the large and small airways and we know COPD is a disease of the small airways and it also contributes to the large airways. So it makes sense to me to consider that. The key thing is, is in randomized controlled trials, all our patients are told to use the inhaler in an absolute correct manner. They're intensively followed up. There are select inclusion criteria. They may not reflect the population that I see in my clinic or indeed my primary care physician colleagues see in their pl uh, clinic. So it's important to consider how does extra fine versus large particles work or act in the community, in the real life. So there have been some very nice real life studies that have undertaken in the last few years comparing large versus small particles. And together, they are showing a very strong message. They are actually now showing that small particles extra fine give you a better outcome on asthma control and asthma control quality of life. And a recent publication also shows that in COPD. In addition, we can use a much lower dose with an extra fine formulation compared to a coarse particle. And that has to certainly be beneficial to our patients because you're getting a lower dose of a steroid given to a patient to achieve as good an effect, if not better, than a coarse particle in real life studies.